Mythic Hunters is meant for an adult audience, so be sure to check the show notes for any content warnings on each episode. Hello, fellow Truth Cadets. You ever gaze up at the sky and wonder what else is out there? What myth lurks in the dark? Can the unknown be known? Or does it? Then join us on this journey we call the hunt for the destination we call the truth. Welcome to Mythic Hunters. You know, a week ago, the station owner called and told me I did a great job. And they were thrilled to see me back on my feet. Which means even the station does not listen to this show. So, here we are. Back again. Cheers to that. (sighs) Oh yeah, I'm Burke Ashley. Weatherman turned wizard enabler. Or whoever this is for. Let's check in with our field reporter, Sierra. Are you there? Sierra here, coming to you live from the woods in Michigan, where there have been sightings of a mysterious beast attacking campers. You always sound that chipper, huh? Well, you know, it takes more muscles to frown than a smile. That is not scientifically true. Well, no pain, no gain. Also doesn't make sense. I have in the studio today the victim of a dog attack as well as an expert on folklore surrounding canines. <sighs> werewolves. We're doing a werewolves episode. They gave me a script for this, but come on, you know what a werewolf is. Were meaning man, wolf meaning wolf, man wolf, wolf man, men who become wolves in the full moon. Look, I get it. You're a 15th century farmer and you drink until you black out, do some weird stuff, and then you blame a dog bite. Oh, the beast took me over. It was the moon. I've never seen that horse before, officer. We can't keep hiding behind these lies. I think we can all admit men don't really need an excuse to behave like animals. Oh, it's out. We can drink in here? Yep. It's smoking that's not allowed. Damn, now I want to smoke. Oh, this is our first victim, Will. Tell us about how you got attacked in the woods. It was sick. Okay, so I was in this cabin with a group of friends. I know, horror movie shit happens when you go into the woods. But it turned out to be really cool and everyone was having a good time. This guy Brent, who none of us knew that well, but he put up the money for the cabin. He disappeared. We all split up to look for him. I know, horror movie shit. And while I was in the woods alone, I turned around and there was a giant fucking wolf looking right at me, bro, like into my soul. Like there was the wolf standing on two legs and there was me on my legs. And in that moment, it was like I was the wolf too. And the wolf, he was me. And then I started chasing me. I ended up running straight into the lake because wolves can't swim. But neither can I. So I'm lucky to be alive today. So, to make sure I have all the facts in order, you saw a wolf in the woods. Yeah. But, like, it wasn't a wolf. It was Brent. The next morning he showed up and wouldn't tell anyone where he'd been. But we shared a look. A he knew that I knew look. Knew what? That he was the wolf. Did you ever follow up with him about the fact that once a month he becomes a werewolf? Oh, no. None of us ever spoke to him again because we still owe money for the cabin. It's pretty cool that you saw a wolf. How big would you say it was? Real big. Great. Love the specifics. Let's check back in with our field reporter, Sierra. You there? Sierra here. This really nice group of campers offered to let me follow them. They're going to shed their skin under the full moon, so obviously, they're the werewolves. That is going to be a hippie sex party, Sierra. No, they have a bonfire set up and everyone's really hairy. A guy's playing acoustic guitar. I think you're right. Good looking out. Yeah, a lot of freaks out there. They don't even need to be freaks. Brand wasn't cool at all, except paying for that trip. Thanks, Brian. Our expert this week is Nora Fox, lycanthropy folklore expert. 
So, when did humans first start telling stories of animal transformation? When did it first start? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm more interested in where things are going. Interesting. So the mythology is changing in the modern age? The lore now is so much more than scary stories. It taps into our most primal drives. Werewolf stories now tend to start off with a classic heroine archetype, an underappreciated woman, unlucky in love. She meets a man, and what a man he is. Rugged, sexy, rippling muscles, and he's perfect, except for one thing. He's a werewolf. And he eats her? Oh, he eats her. He licks her right up. Oh, the Pope rides a ten speed. I walked right into this one. She has to tame him to mate him. You can read more about this in my ebook series, An American Werewolf in Lauren. You're here peddling your dirty stories about bestiality. It's not bestiality. He's a wolf man. You're not an expert because you want to fuck a wolf. These stories aren't all about wolves, okay? I wrote a really popular one about a were ferret. He's small, but bendy. I can never unpicture that. Let's check back in with Sierra. Hi, Burke. Thanks for the tip about those weirdos. Luckily, I met a nice man named Boris, and he's letting me charge my phone in his cabin. You're in the cabin with him? <laughs> oh, Boris. Not Brant. You guys are sweet for worrying, but I'm fine. I got a gun! I mean, that probably is a good idea if you're out there alone. Yeah, and Boris gave it to me, so I know I can trust him. Why would he give you a gun? I told him I was tracking down the werewolf, and he said, Thank God, you know. And he gave me the gun and told me there were silver bullets, but he could only afford three bullets because people still owe him money for renting his cabin. So I had to be careful with them. Then he took me back to the cabin, and he went into the basement. Get out of there. Again, I have a gun. I'm fine. But you only have three bullets. Yeah, but I took two practice shots, so I'm ready. I have a question for Sierra. Yeah? This Boris, describe him for me. I mean, for the audience. Oh, yeah. Tall, like, about six foot. Mm, yeah. And uh, he seems a bit mm. unkempt, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Beard growing out. Oh, God. Flannel shirt, Ooh. it's a bit too tight. Oh, yeah. Chest hair poking through. Good listener. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 that's just, oh, man, isn't it just all oh, wolf? Sierra, you're going to think you can change him, but you can't. Only the moon can change him. Wow, that was beautiful. You know, you guys have me worried. I'm going into the basement. Oh, no. That cabin has creaky stairs. Horror movie shit. That's... The red flag. Huh. This is weird. Boris locked himself into a cage and he took his shirt off. Okay, this is promising. Does he does he have an Apollo belt? You know, one of those hip V's super fit guys have, you know, cum gutters. He's breathing hard and watching me. Guys, I think Boris might be a pervert. What? Oh, I think it's fine if a man wants a woman to lock him in a cage. We've all been there. But him tricking you into it is out of line. Just leave. Look into his eyes. Try to make him see that the two of you, you're not so different after all. I'm looking into his eyes. That's what perverts want. That's what we all want. His yellow eyes look so yellow in the moonlight. And so bright. Oh, Boris, you can't help what you are. Ah! He lunged at me. Oh, no. Oh, no. He looks angry. Get out of there. Something's happening. He's getting bigger, and his pants are getting really tight. Can he see his wolf cut? Okay. Let's go to the ad. If you're like me, you're a modern man on the go with a normal amount of hair. You've got an averagely busy life and never mysteriously disappear for days on end. You need the normal man shave pack, which is a type of kit, not a pack of wolves. We will send you a box of razors and accessories right to your home every month. 
coincidentally during the full moon. Our three blade razors are perfect. Not too many, not too few. All moderately sharp, normal. Our shaving cream, room temperature. Our mustache comb, regular size. Our beard oil, unremarkable. No surprises here. Order your first shave pack, which again does not refer to a pack of wolves. Stay there. And feel human again. Sierra, you okay? He was a man. I know. But he was a wolf when I shot him. And I believe that you believe that, which I think will be necessary to your defense. I think he was still alive when he limped off. That's the spirit, yes. As far as you know, you didn't even hit him. It's not even your gun. Just, uh, just get out of there, okay? And seriously, be careful walking home. The full moon makes people super weird. Yeah, like they turn into werewolves. No. Will, no. I'm serious. You want to go outside? Outside. Yeesh. That was so much more upsetting than I thought it was going to be. Uh, yeah, kind of kills the wolf fantasy. So... From now on, I guess, instead of picturing a sexy wolfman in bed, I'll just pretend my husband is his brother or something. You're married? Oh, yeah, but I don't like to wear my ring out in case I meet someone. I'm someone. And all human. Hmm, that's kind of a turnoff, to be honest. You into furry? Fucking in parks? You're all a bunch of animals. And I'm off the clock in five, four, three times up. The show's over. Join us next week where we uncover more depravity. For us believers and non-believers, life is a big mythic hunt. Mythic Hunters was created by Sarah Golub and E. Sendero, is produced, sound engineered, and edited by Lauren Bancroft, and features an original musical score by Eric Jorgensen. Today's episode was written and directed by Sarah Golub and features the voice talents of Kirk Novak, Savannah Parra, Sid Raskind, and Honora Talbot. Mythic Hunters is a Bancroft Inc. production. Guys? <laughs>